Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, welcome to our today's uh, lesson in biology. Uh, we are discussing the topic transport in animals and uh, specifically I would want us to discuss uh, the structure and function of the heart. So the structure and function of a mammalian heart. And uh, to discuss the heart, uh, it is important to look at two aspects of the heart. Uh, first of all, we look at the external structure and then we can uh, look at uh, the internal. Uh, it happens that uh, uh, the external structure of the heart, uh, the heart is uh, found within the thoracic cavity of the body beneath the rib cage. So the heart is located within the thoracic cavity beneath the rib cage. And it happens that uh, the heart being a delicate organ of the body, it needs that protection. So you can say that the heart is located within the thoracic cavity beneath the rib cage or beneath the ribs beneath the rib cage for protection now the other thing is that um, uh, externally, the heart is surrounded by a double membrane and that double membrane is known as pericardium, is known as pericardium. And that pericardium, uh, it secretes a fluid that is known as pericardial fluid. And the importance of that fluid is that... Um, it lubricates the heart during pumping, during its contraction and relaxation. Also, uh, we are saying that uh, that movement yeah, is likely to create some friction. Is likely to create some friction and that is why the pericardial fluid acts as a lubricant. So we can say that... Uh, the outer part of the heart has a double membrane and that double membrane is called pericardium or pericardium. Now, so let's look at uh, the functions of pericardium which is the double membrane on the outer part of the heart. So number one, we are saying that uh, the membrane secretes a fluid called pericardial fluid. Pericardial fluid acts as a lubricant. Acts as a lubricant uh, to minimize friction. So wherever there is movement, there is likely to be friction. So in this case, as the heart moves within its chamber or within its uh, area of location, uh, that movement is likely to create friction. And the pericardial fluid ensures that that friction is reduced by acting as a lubricant. Uh, also, pericardium prevents overstretching 
of the heart prevents overstretching of the heart during contraction so it makes sure that the heart does not uh, overstretch beyond the required uh, limit um, another function of the pericardium is that uh, on the outer side it contains a fat layer and that fat layer acts as a shock absorber that fat layer acts as a shock absorber against any physical injury any physical injury that may take place so basically we've seen that on the outer part of the heart we have a double membrane that is known as a pericardium pericardium has uh, three functions it secretes a fluid known as pericardial fluid that acts as a lubricant that uh, membrane also prevents overstretching of the heart during contraction and three on the outer side of the same pericardium uh, is a fat layer that acts as a shock absorber against any physical injury that is likely to happen to the heart now still on the outer part of the heart uh, we have the heart muscles so that is now beneath the pericardium we have are the heart muscles and these heart muscles are called cardiac muscles cardiac muscles and these muscles are supplied with blood uh, by an artery that is known as coronary artery so the coronary artery is the one that runs on the outer surface of the cardiac muscles to ensure that those muscles are supplied with nutrients and are supplied with oxygen with oxygen and nutrients by the coronary artery coronary artery and uh, this coronary artery divides into several arterioles and several capillaries to make sure that uh, that oxygen and those nutrients reach the entire uh, muscles of the heart so you are saying that uh, coronary artery divides into arterioles and then into capillaries that reach all the tissues within all the tissues within the cardiac muscles then uh, when these capillaries have supplied oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscles they unite they unite into some smaller vessels known as venules and the venules unite to form what is called the coronary vein the coronary vein is now the one that removes carbon dioxide from the heart muscles 
and other metabolic wastes and those uh, metabolic wastes are emptied are emptied into um, into the right atrium so the capillaries unite into venules venules are branches of veins then form coronary vein and we are saying that coronary vein this one uh, transports carbon four oxide and metabolic wastes and other that is uh, carbon four oxide is also a metabolic waste so carbon four oxide and other metabolic wastes to the right atrium to the right atrium so the right atrium now forms the internal part of the heart so basically that is about the external structure of the heart we'll have a short assignment on that so the first question what is the function of coronary artery number two give three roles played by pericardium so that marks the external structure of the heart and we'll continue from there next time.